Hey, what's up, pop-up camper family? Welcome back to It's Poppin'. So as the video title suggests, I wanna share with you how we go about looking for water damage or signs of leaks when you're going to buy a used pop-up camper. Now, this could be if you're completely new to pop-up camping and this is your first pop-up camper, or maybe this is your second, third, or fourth pop-up camper and you're just wondering what we do to look for water damage or leaks. Now, as many of you know, Water damage and leaks can completely ruin a pop-up camper. Um, it can be very costly in terms of your time if you're a DIYer, or even if you can find a professional to repair it for you, it can be very costly to repair. And that's why we're, we're talking about roof repair, side box repair, or subflooring. Any of it is just costly in both time and money. So what this video aims to do and what I hope this will um, enable you to do, or at least it will empower you to feel confident in your purchase of your pop-up camper going forward. Now, I also want to kind of manage some expectations with this video. We've looked at maybe a dozen pop-up campers over the last few years just for ourselves and to purchase. And virtually all of them whether they were 5, 10, 15, 20 years old, had some sign of water damage. So maybe it was like a small little bit that was getting in and then it got caught by the owner, or it was really, really bad and um, I can't believe the owner didn't say anything in the ad about it. So what I wanna do by managing expectations, and what I mean by that is if you're paying full-blown price, like full NADA or a price that is in line with a pop-up camper that's in excellent condition, then you need to make sure that there's no water damage. Now, on the other hand, if you're getting a really great deal and perhaps a seller is disclosing that and you know going in that there's water damage for the price, that's another situation. But what I don't want you to do is pay full-blown price and get completely taken by surprise when you're expecting to have like an excellent or like new condition pop-up camper. So that's what I mean by managing your expectations. All right guys, so the first place I always check, <laughs> this is the absolute first thing I always check when I walk up to a pop-up camper that I'm checking out for the first time. And that's gonna be the underside so the sub flooring of the corners of the floor so in all seriousness get absolutely under your pop-up camper and if you can see we have this particle board right here that meets the frame i always get up and under here and physically press on this plywood sub floor and if you can't push up on it at all, that's 100% fantastic like this. This is rock solid, and that means there's been no water um, coming in from above. On the other hand, and this is that corner of our front storage box that definitely had some water damage. However, I did repair this with some um, epoxy. This was very, very, well, I shouldn't say very soft, but pretty darn soft to the point where definitely there was water getting into the bottom of the floor here and causing some water damage now unfortunately i can't show you how squishy it was before but rest assured if you can push your finger into that wood at all just just by doing this that definitely means there's some water damage so like i said that is the absolute first spot i check those four corners will tell you and that's probably 90 percent of the time if there's been water damage it never fails that there might be a bad seal on the box corner or even at the top of the box. Commonly, there's some sort of plastic or metal cap that might become compromised. Water gets in there, comes all the way down the side wall, and then, of course, uh, ends up um, being sucked into that subfloor. So the reason I recommend that you check the four corners of the subflooring first is because, of course, you can check that whether or not the pop-up camper is popped up or if it's down. Now, if the seller gives you a choice, you know, hey, hey, would you like to see it up or down when you first get here? I always recommend coming to see it with it popped completely down. So the reason I prefer to inspect a pop-up camper closed up 
is of course because then you can see the roof right away. If it's uh, popped up, that might be the last thing you inspect and unfortunately you've probably then wasted a lot more time checking everything else out that you need to. But if the roof is down and you're able to see it, of course it's a lot easier to check for water damage in the roof or at least the exterior of the roof. So first things first, check out the side panel of your entire roof. What that'll enable you to do is kind of, and actually you can kind of check it out at an angle and just keep an eye on how, you know, I guess even the, that aluminum or whatever it's made out of side panel of the roof is. And for example, we have a little bit of water damage in this board that supports the corner of the roof right here. And now let me see right there actually, you can see that a little bit amount of waviness. And unfortunately, that is because some water, not a lot, just a little bit got in here and caused this piece of wood right here, of course, to soften up um, and warp a little bit. Another thing I want you guys to look at on the roof are how these bolts are. If you see that they're coming through the um, side panel, that might mean that this part is water damaged. So, but if they're looking like this, and of course you can kind of feel everything, make sure it's nice and solid. These uh, bolts or screws aren't pulling through. That's always a good sign. And once again, same thing with the clasps themselves. If those are pulling through, or they're loose, that might mean that the wood behind them is compromised. And now you can see this one has a little flex, but once again, it's right under that guy. So kind of interesting how that all ties together. But once again, right there, nice and solid, nice and solid. Now for the rooftop itself, it's kind of the same thing. What you're gonna wanna do is just kind of look across it and make sure that it's nice and even, there aren't any waves, and with our roof, you can kind of tell it's got a nice curvature to it in the center. It, it comes down from the center. It doesn't kind of cave in or anything. Um, we don't see, well, we see a little discoloration from sap, but when we cleaned it, it was nice and clean. You know, there weren't, weren't any discolorations around the air conditioner or, and I guess in our case, the vent. And that means, of course, water isn't like pooling somewhere where it could possibly get in and um, cause some water damage. So if your roof has any water damage or leaks, it's gonna essentially be evident and it almost looked like it kind of delaminated. Now this is ours is a fiberglass roof and under the fiberglass is just maybe some one inch um, styrofoam insulation. So if water gets in there, and I think they just use some sort of adhesive to adhere the fiberglass to the um, foam insulation. If you see some delamination between that or that waves like I was saying before, that might mean that there was some water getting in and of course commonly it's going to be around your air conditioner seal or if you have one, the um, roof vent fan. But also, as in our case, there was some water getting into this um, roof rack mount. So. If there are roof racks that somehow mount through the roof itself, that's another possible uh, route for water to get in. So if the pop-up camper you're looking at doesn't have any water damage in those two spots, the subfloor right around the corners or on the roof, you're in pretty good shape so far. And so the next step, um, and what I recommend doing, is actually raising the roof hmm, maybe two or three feet and do it yourself. That way you also get the feeling of how the roof raises, you know, is it binding or anything, but that's kind of the subject for a different video. And so what we'll do here is we'll just uh, raise up the roof a little bit and I'll show you the next spot to check. And so what we're gonna do here is we are going to check the inside of the roof area with the canvas or the vinyl not being taut. So under the roof here, as you can see, we of course have all of this just regular old wood. What I want you to do is actually go along the entirety of the interior of the roof. Check out this wood and make sure none of this is rotted out 
or discolored, anything like that, because that'll be a sure sign of a leak or water damage. And this is especially important in the areas, of course, where the top of the roof um, lifting post actually bolt in. So this right here is essentially what you're looking for. As you can tell, it hasn't rotted all the way through that board, but if it continued to leak and continued to get water in there, that could have made its, uh, made its way all the way down through this board and of course compromise the integrity of the entire uh, side board of the roof. Now this next area, while you're still on the exterior of your pop-up, uh, the pop-up you're looking to buy may or may not have one of these and that is of course the front storage box. Now there is a reason why a lot of the manufacturers that are still manufacturing pop-ups have gone away from these or perhaps are using like a rotal molded front storage box that is a separate entity from the rest of the pop-up camper and that's because these things are notorious for leaking. So if the one you're looking at has one of these they're a great feature to have in terms of storage uh, for a lot of those items you don't know where else to put, but definitely check them for leaks. So for example, many of you know that we completely, um, I guess, redid this sidewall of our front storage box. Um, that meant, you know, redoing all of the furring strips, the Luan right here, and a lot of work went into um, renovating and repairing the front storage box. So all I implore you to do is get in here, check the corners of the flooring, make sure they're not soft, make sure they're not wet, make sure there's no water damage in here. But not only that, but also make sure you check up and under any areas that might also possibly have water getting in. The plastic above these is once again notorious for cracking and letting in water. So reach up in here, check for soft spots, make sure none of it is compromised by water. And to finish out the exterior inspection of the pop-up camper, just check these side walls. Our particular pop-up camper is made with an aluminum sidewall. And once again, as many of you know, we had some water damage that came in this front storage box and actually essentially ate through the interior and just totally compromise this really thin aluminum to the point where of course we had to repair it and patch it so this was this was one thing that threw me for a loop when we bought this pop-up i mean i thought aluminum right it's it's um, you know rust proof it's it's not going to um, be damaged by water but i was wrong on that count so i would just make sure and do a visual inspection of the exterior side walls of your pop-up camper just <laughs> so you aren't throwing it uh, by any loops. So as we work our way inside, the first thing I want you to check is the area where the door meets the floor essentially. So that flooring right around where the door is. For whatever reason, that's an area that can suffer some water damage. And I'm guessing, you know, if you have a door that's not properly sealed or things like that. So definitely an area to check. So now that we're inside, the first place I go to, of course, is the inside of the roof. What I like to do, go straight to these corners of your roof, pull down those valences and check around the roof and actually physically push up on the roof there make sure once again that there's no soft spots and i like to look for maybe signs of rust or water coming in and pulling some uh or, and rusting out like the screws so for example here is where that roof bracket is where we have that little bit of water damage and as you can see that bolt's a little bit rusty these screws holding in the canvas uh, track are a little bit rusty so of course once again, signs that water was getting in here uh, to a certain extent. Now, sometimes if there's been a lot of water getting in, especially over the parts of canvas, or in our case, vinyl right here, you'll actually see kind of, you know, that discoloration or rust color getting into the canvas itself and seeking down, seeping down. So that is of course an indication that there might be a leak somewhere along the line here. And once again, just make sure all of these pieces that hold up your canvas or curtains are nice and solid. Now, next up, while we're still looking at the roof, I encourage you to, if there is one, of course, 
find the air conditioner, press up around the air conditioner, and if there's been any leaks or water getting in around that air conditioner seal, you might commonly see it, of course, immediately around that air conditioner. And you might see, for example, once again, some sort of delamination. Now this is an aluminum roof, but like on our old StarCraft, it was just kind of the, for lack of a better term, contact paper that actually um, can show water damage and it'll kind of get loose and sag down a little bit. So definitely a spot to look for. Same thing goes, of course, if you have a roof vent fan. So press up and around this. Now, I put this in myself, so I know this is solid, but once again, push up around it, check it out, look for signs of water damage or water getting in. Finally, if the roof is looking like it's in good condition, I always like to kind of just walk around. Hopefully the stabilizers are down. Walk around and just feel if the flooring has any soft spots. Jump up and down a little bit. You know, make sure it's not softer than it should be. And of course you can double check if you think some spot is soft by actually crawling under your pop under the pop-up and taking a look at the subflooring underneath. But I like to just bounce around a little bit and make sure the flooring feels solid. And going beyond that, next thing of course, and this is gonna be part of your inspection when you're making sure everything works and you're taking a look in the cupboards and cabinets, making sure everything looks how it's supposed to. But if there's areas where water lines are present and in our pop-up, that's pretty much everywhere. We have a sink, we have an inside shower, we have a water heater in the front storage box. Take a look, take a look where if, for example, one of those um, pieces of pipe, you know, came uncoupled or cracked and sprung a leak, just take a look for any water damage. Now, hopefully that's been fixed and rectified by the owner and that won't be a continuing issue but just take a look for water damage that could be in those areas. Of course, the MDF board that's common in a lot of pop-up campers um, that the cabinets are commonly comprised of or the countertops, those suck up water like a sponge. So if you see some, some areas in the cabinetry or countertopping that um, have swollen up or swelled up, taken on water, maybe that's because there was a leak inside the pop-up and like I said, hopefully that's been rectified and it won't become a further issue. Now, if that happened, unfortunately, it's just gonna be kind of a cosmetic issue that you'll have to deal with going forward. But that is the final spot. We look for any water damage or leaks within our pop-up camper. So those are very important places to check for water damage. And I just want you all to feel confident that you know, you're not getting taken advantage of, you're not missing anything, and you're not in for any unexpected surprises down the road and even before you get into actually doing the inspection yourself there are some questions you can definitely ask the seller beforehand and maybe you save some time but not even having to travel to it so of course definitely just ask hey is there has there or is there any water damage to this pop-up camper do you know of anything that happened are there any leaks is anything you know leaking on it that you're aware of. And hopefully the seller, if they know about it, is honest. Half the time I think sellers are just unfortunately ignorant of what's going on in their own pop-up or they just haven't owned it long enough. The other half of the time it's like, how could you not know that? And then a few more questions you can of course ask, hey, when's the last time you resealed? You know, when's the last time you recocked the roof? When's, when's the last time you recocked the corner panels? And you know, if it's been within the last year or two, hey, that's great. That means they're hopefully a little bit more on top of things. They're on top of that maintenance to prevent this water damage and leaks. And then of course you can ask, how is that pop-up camper stored? If this was stored in a garage or inside a storage facility somewhere, or even if it was under a, a, a appropriate pop-up camper cover, that might mean you know it had less of a chance of sustaining you know those extended leaks that result in the major major water damage so those are just a few questions you of course can ask the seller beforehand before actually getting into it and checking it out for yourself so i hope you guys learned something and i hope you guys feel more confident buying a used pop-up camper or maybe this is your second or third and you just need a little bit of refresher to get back into things so 
as always, guys, hopefully we see you in the next video. If not, hopefully we see you out there camping.